AM 1000. I just want to say right now, if Larry King tr tries to get Brandmeier's job, I will fight like a rabid dog to protect John. Like a pit bull in heat. If anybody tries to bump Brandmeier, like Larry King. And I like, and you know, I'm happy that Larry's getting back with his wife, his ex. Julio, he calls him. Happy about that. I'm not willing to give it up yet, you know. I mean, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely make a run at the. You know, King has got a lot of clout, man. He's gonna start marching in here with his, his 486 stations. But hey, how often does he eat at the oak tree, huh? When does Larry King go down to City Hall for you, huh? How many times does Larry King go to a Lithuanian protest, huh? At Daly Center, or whatever. Ted, you're on the loop. AM 1000. Yeah, uh, nice being on your show. Uh, I just wanted to say last night, I was on my way home from work, and you were talking about at the beginning of your show tonight all this random violence and how the news is putting on all this petty stuff when we should uh, basically pay attention to what's really going on in our streets. And I saw a couple things last night that just uh, really made me think what's really going on here. And to me, it's I feel like sometimes I'm living in a zoo. Well, what do you think ought to be done? If, if you ruled the world, huh? You have all the power. You're the mayor, you're the governor, you're the president, you're anybody you want to be. What would you do? Well, I don't think it's just what I could do. I think it's what a lot of people have. Well, what about you? You go first. Me, I would, uh, without too much violation of civil rights, I would have to give the police just a little more power and the judges I think some of the technicalities in these laws these days that are getting a lot of these people off. What do, you, what do you think the police should do that they don't do right now? WLUP Chicago, by the way, it's top of the... I want to meet him. Was it you? <laughs> there you go. There's the sound of murderous violence uh, two years ago, by the way. So it's, it's even more intense and more dangerous right now. What uh, we have instead, we don't have a solution to the problem with violence in our city. We don't have a, a solution. The mayor doesn't have one, the police chief doesn't have one, and we're waiting to see if maybe you can help us. But here's what we do have. They finished the work on Lakeshore Drive early. They paid an extra, the city did, or I should say, who paid it here? Let's see, Department of Transportation, thank you. It's like, like, it's not our tax money now, huh? <laughs> It's only our state tax money instead of our city tax money. Uh, they finished three weeks early. We gave them an extra $80,000. Now, help me figure this out. You don't want to have an overrun if they go too long because they charge you extra money. So they finished early. So we gave them, that's right, extra money. Somebody's going to have to help me with that because I, I just don't quite understand it. Hi, who's... Rick Highland, Indiana. Rick? Yeah, you know what, I, Ed, you there? Rick. Yes, how you doing? Why do they give the guy $80,000 for finishing early? <laughs> you got me on that one. I just tuned into your show. I, I hope I didn't miss the whole gist of this evening's uh, show. I heard the guy before me calling in and talk a little bit about uh, some of the crime problem, perhaps, in the, in the show. Yeah, but I want to know, why do you think we pay somebody $80,000 extra for finishing the road improvements early? You know, it's, it's a matter of record uh, in Illinois there. You have the uh, highest, one of the highest uh, cost per mile of, of roads in your state. Now, there, where, so. is, where does that come from? Who, who calculates you know, the, what trustworthy agency of the government would give you that fact? You know, I'm kind of spitting this back out. I'm a Stephen. Yeah, I know. Well, you know what? Well, Instead you, of giving me sensational statistics, I want to know why you think we pay $80,000 extra when they finish early. That's a, a possibly an incentive, but beyond that, it's a, that is an, it's an incentive to, to what, though? It's an incentive to whom? In other words, how do, how do you, the taxpayer, do on a deal like that? <laughs> uh, I can't really explain. That's probably a mystery to a lot of people. I can't really explain that yeah. at all. But it probably keeps a lot of guys at least mobile during the day, which is more than you could probably say if they weren't given mm. that incentive. Oh, well. Okay, so what's up? Nothing much. Like I said, I just I just oh. got home and tuned into hey. the show. Well, I appreciate your call, man. Hi, who's this? You're on the loop. Hey. AM 1000. Hello? Hello? 
Hello, Dave. Oh. Oh, man. We're getting all PhDs calling in tonight. Oh, okay. All right. Now, go ahead, Dave. You got a, you asked the question of why pay the 80000 It's kind of like when you go down to the corner convenience store in the middle of the night and you're wanting to pay extra for milk just for convenience and not being held up by uh, stuck in long traffic lines. So we bribe them to be honest. Well, I guess so. I'm going to have the carrot and the stick. Gosh. Jeez. We don't have any honest people that we could hire from the get-go? that we wouldn't have to pay them extra to tell the truth? In other words, you got to figure if they could finish early and then they didn't have the incentive and they finished late, that would make them liars, cheaters, and thieves, huh? I guess so. Guess so, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know why the sanitation department is drilling holes on Illinois Street because they, is, they claim they don't know where the sewer is. Do you believe this? Hmm. They got, a, they got a yellow truck on Illinois Street, right near Channel 5, right near that little burgeoning area of the central loop there. And uh, they're digging holes in the street to find out where the sewer is. I guess they're mad. Now, I think, I think we, we're dealing with... And, of course, there wouldn't be any crooks in government like those people in the first ward, huh? <laughs> Gee, that's ridiculous, wasn't it? Wow. I wish I could, like, punch into work and take off and work someplace else for a while, huh? Gosh, not me. I was raised in a different uh, type of family. But I tell you, there's obviously very little uh, commitment on the part of uh, public workers in, in our community uh, to help out you and me. I guess, I guess that they don't really, you know, pay a lot of taxes like we do. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I was kind of being a, a little sarcastic with my comment there. Um, what I did call about is I got to see that videotape tonight, and I was just, I could not believe what in the world I saw there. Um, I'm just wondering how long it's going to take for the true and honest citizens of this country before they pop and say, hey, enough is enough, and uh, they'll look like Chuck Bronson running around here with, like, Death Wish or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why we should expect not to be shot the next time we walk down the street. Why should we think it's okay to take our children to the park? Why is it okay? I mean, how many people are going to get killed over the summer festival season? You know, just how many do you figure? We've already had, what, 800 homicides? Uh, I, I don't know. Something like that. We've had some grotesque number already. Uh, you know, it just seems like somebody just doesn't care that all these people are getting killed uh, and that the violence is so... So out of hand that, that it's being flaunted to us now. Now they're, now they're doing it on camera to show us they're doing it. I think you and I have to accept some responsibility. You and I c certainly didn't do everything we could. There's no way you and I did. I mean, I, I'll go first and say I know I didn't. I haven't done enough. Um, and I think until people w are willing to accept responsibility for this, which usually means they have to lose a family member or they have to lose an eye, or, you know, their grandmother gets beaten up so bad that her skull gets crushed, like happened a couple of weeks ago. I don't know what it's going to take to shake you and me out of our comfort zone here. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, look what happened to Rome. That's what happened to Rome, man. The, the crime and the, the degrada human degrading or degradation, whichever way you like it, you know. I say it both ways so everybody knows what I mean. The degrading of the human being every day. Take his money. Uh, rape the women, steal from the poor, uh, keep all the wealth in one place. I mean, it seems to me, after you've done this for 10,000 years, and everybody that does this fails, we would start to say, maybe we're not going to fail. Maybe we're going to, you know, maybe you and I are going to do something. I don't know. We probably are not, though. You and I are probably go about our regular lives, and uh, more kids will die. And we don't, you and I don't even go to the funerals, do we? Not unless it directly affects us. Or, or unless we're treated to them on TV. Right. When the TV treats us to a funeral, then we, then we feel awful. Right before that Oscar Mayer baloney commercial, we feel awful. We almost have a tear well up, and then, bingo, it's Oscar Mayer sandwich time, or it's uh, KFC chicken with Magic Johnson, or it's buy a new pair of sneakers, or uh, it's uh, Remax. Re you know what I mean? We go right back to what we're doing and uh, just hope that we win uh, tickets to see Johnny B. Because let's face it, that's why we need to see Johnny B. 
We need to go to the movies and the theater and the concert and the TV and the MTV. We need all that because we don't want to face what we're really living in. Come on, you know, if, if, you, went, uh, if you went to all of these uh, diversionary things and you found the very same thing you find on the 6 o'clock news, what kind of fun would that be? I mean, you wouldn't be paying 30 bucks to sit down in a, in a public seat, would you? That's right. You know? Yeah, it's kind of like back in the Depression where one of the biggest industries was the movie industry because it diverted people's attention from the troubles of the day today. Oh, it's just, uh, it's, it's elementary, my dear Watson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate your call. The Loop AM 1000, The Ed Till Show. Boy, I hate to be so negative, though, huh? Are we offering any hope? Are we offering any ray of good news? For, I, don't, I don't see any on the horizon here. There's got to be something that we're missing. Tony is on a car phone in Elmhurst. Yeah, I'd like to know why we can spend billions of dollars liberating Kuwait, and why can't we liberate our inner cities? Why, me as a white boy from the suburbs, I'm afraid to go into certain parts of the city. I mean, our cities are under siege, and we're not doing anything about it. Boy, that's, uh, that's it. That's all you got to say. The Loop, AM 1000, more calls on what this last guy said from his car phone, huh? The AM loop, by the way, WLUP in Chicago, The Ed Till Show, we're here with you until 1 a.m.